Hmm. I didn't know that the penguin worked at the zoo. Dad, what are you doing? I'm becoming a member of the West Coast Avengers. I guess so. West, West Coast Avengers! West Coast Avengers! West Coast Avengers! Welcome back to the West Coast Avengers, your source for comic books. Where else are you going to go? Comic Tom? Yeah. Bronze and Modern Gods, fine. Uh, happy Sunday. Thank you for joining. Part two, I don't even know what to call this, the, uh, the Junk Warehouse Hall. Don't forget, like, comment, subscribe, watch the video to the end, all that fun stuff, all my links down below. Way as goes, goes Wednesday. Wednesday. My comic book claim sale and auction here on YouTube every Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Come join me, come buy some books. By the time you see this, maybe some of these books are gone. That's just the cold, hard reality. So this is part two of the epic double box haul. I'm gonna show you some more footage but don't forget to watch the first episode. We'll go through a bunch of books there and then you'll see the rest of what I got. It was insane. And one huge, huge personal grail. Let's show some more footage, me digging through these boxes and making my own cherry picked boxes. And I'll see you on the recap of the haul in just a moment. Let's go. <laughs> you thought I was gonna talk about digging through comic books, but really, I'm here to talk about conspiracy theories. Oh, sorry, just kidding. Uh, here we are, back again for another digging fun adventure. And as you can see, it's just some of the same stuff you saw last week and different flavors. Lots of Deadpool, so I'll pick those up all the time because I feel that Deadpool books are at a lull right now. Green TMNT one of the fun things that I pulled out of here was the Twisted Mego Theater from Toy Fair, a funny magazine. Hmm. I had the first to show that. Hmm. That sucks. Oh. 15 long boxes is a lot to dig through and a lot of books to try and calculate my brain. Like, is this a key? Is this worth it? Do I need this book? But I think I did pretty good. And I don't think I missed too much watching this footage again. It's fun. The James O'Barr cover. No, it survived the fall. Nobody saw that. I'm not gonna edit that out, though. See, I didn't edit that out. I dropped the book, but it fell flat, and that's okay. Lots of Wolverine in these boxes. I love Wolverine, but I did not need 500 Wolverine comics. Uh, there was a lot of DC, as you see, that rhymes, but I didn't grab a lot of it either. Here we go. We're going to get into some older stuff. Deadpool. Army of Darkness. Mm, it's any type of weird Transformers. Death High Cost of Living. That's time of your life. Uh, sure. Jim Lee signed Fantastic Four. Hello. Fuck it, I'll just take it. I remember, oh, this is that, yeah, I remember this. I'll take it. I loved reading that, it was bad. Hello. I wonder if that's the rest of the Secret Wars back there. You see that? Right there? I think that might be. Let's see. Jonah Hex, War of Kings, Weapon X, Wolverine Noir, Spider-Man Noir would be nice. So, there we go. 
right, let's see what we got here. There's a Ring County X Force number one. And Thanos Imperative. That looks like the rest of, yeah, and this is definitely going to be more Secret Wars right here. As you saw last week, I found a bunch of Secret Wars, but I was hoping that I'd find an eight tucked in there somewhere, but there was nothing. Last week, you saw the big book that I pulled out was Saga 1, and I thought I didn't have the footage recorded of me finding it, but here we go. Right now was the bunch of Saga books that I had found, and it was just a matter of time before I flipped through, and I found that beautiful copy of number one, which I think is going to be about a 9.6. So uh, I picked up a bunch of G.I. Joe. I'm not big into G.I. Joe, but holy fucking grail alert right there, gentlemen and ladies. I don't care. I'm buying that. Hello! So we'll start off with uh, the Prestige Edition of Batman vs. Predator. All three parts. Nice condition. Beautiful copies on that. One lonely spawn in the entire box. Uh, there was a bunch of Blood Feud and there was uh, all the different other spawns. Spawn Witchblade and Violator, but only one main title, 148. Free comic book edition, the 25th anniversary of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one. So this is actually from 2009, believe it or not. Uh, putting this book at 13 years old, which is pretty cool. I rarely pick out books, or anything for that matter. I rarely spend money just based off a of pure nostalgia bomb. What uh, 40 or 30 or 50 year old male is not a fan of Jenna Jameson in her prime. Virgin Comics from 2008. This is a Jenna Jameson comic that she supposedly wrote called Shadow Hunter. And Virgin Comics was the brainchild of somebody that worked in uh in in the company virgin whether it be richard branson himself or somebody in the higher ups and they got celebrities to write these comics and i bought them when they came out and i remember them being less than good but not so terrible so this is the jenna jameson shadow hunter but to go along with that is the trade paperback of john woo's seven brothers now john woo one of the most brilliant filmmakers of his time and a visionary. So he created this and Garth Ennis wrote this. And I think at the time that I had read this, I was aware of Garth Ennis through Punisher, but I wasn't like a super big Garth Ennis fan. And I remember enjoying this, but I'm going to give it a reread and see if it really holds up. I mean, Garth Ennis is a great writer. Did he really give a shit about this? I guess we'll find out. Closing out that first little piece is uh, Fantastic Four Heroes Reborn issue number one, signed by Jim Lee. And you're like, yeah, David, signed by Jim Lee. Comes with a certificate of authenticity from Wizard Magazine. Got a matching hologram right there. there last week I showed you, I got a full set of World War Hulk and I picked up a partial full set, uh, three, four, and five, but you got the key in there the first appearance of Scar. A book that I don't know much about because I've never read it, and maybe I should, is Young Avengers, but I know they're super sought after and popular, so I just picked up the ones I found, six and seven and 10 and 11. Unfortunately, there was no number one in there. X-Men Deadly Genesis number one, this is a key. This is the first appearance of Vulcan. This is also a variant cover. It's also a great story written by Ed Brubaker, where uh, Vulcan, which I think is like the son or the, no, the other brother of Scott Summers comes to Earth and ends up, Banshee ends up getting killed. I actually enjoyed that story. I, I read it for the first time only a couple of months back. Picked up this book because my homie Joe Benitez did it. This is Wraithborn. Joe is a longtime friend of mine who I had met um, over a decade ago. And he was part of Top Cow. Uh, he was kind of like third generation after Image started you know, kind of came in with Michael Turner. And if you've never read his newest series, which actually it's not that new anymore, but Lady Mechanica is being published by Image Comics. Pick it up. He was the first person to really do a steampunk comic. Double keys right here. Infinite Crisis number five and Blue Beetle number one. First appearance of the new Blue Beetle and the first solo title of the new Blue Beetle. And uh, they have filmed uh, something for HBO. I don't know if it's a show or a movie, Superman Batman number 22. This is the first Batman Beyond in continuity. I had this book. It was in low grade. I have this book now. It's in high grade. This is Marvel Zombies number three. 
uh, homage to Todd McFarlane's classic cover, Hulk number 340. And when you see Todd homage, you buy Todd homage. I didn't get a full set of this, but number one's always good. Secret Invasion number one. And this is a classic storyline that is being adapted into a Disney Plus series coming to a streaming service near you. Thank you, Disney. I'll take my check. Uh, please send it to... Herogasm number one uh, from the pages of the boys. Unfortunately, this book was um, kind of in a box that was not full. So you get that uh, curve. Did get a whole run of Old Man Logan. This is the first issue. The amazing classic storyline written by Mark Miller and illustrated by Steve McNiven. Mark Miller's tenure at Marvel is like chef's kiss. Another Deadpool number one. I believe this is the second volume, maybe the third, the Daniel Way run. Devils Do Publishing, Transformers number one. Holographic cover. I don't think this is worth anything, but it's Transformers. This is Death, Time of Your Life, from the pages of Sandman, Neil Gaiman, everybody's favorite sibling of the Endless Death, and this is the original hardcover. I believe I have it on my shelf. If I don't, this is going right on my shelf. If not, probably going to get gifted to somebody. Now, I don't mean to brag. I unlocked a special achievement. Now I have a diploma from the Xavier Institute for Higher Learning. Guys, I'm a mutant graduate of a fucking X-Men. Look at that. I got a diploma. Hey, Mom. Sure, I got my high school diploma, but this is better. Now we come down to the uh, bigger keys, the, the creme de la creme of this part. You saw what happened here last week. And if you didn't, go back, watch the episode, and then continue where you are right now because you don't want to ruin the surprise. I feel like I've gone like four episodes without singing, okay? A little bit too late on this, but I'm still not going to knock finding two copies of the new Avengers number seven, the first appearance of the Illuminati. Sure, this was a $90 book a couple months ago, but whatever. It's still nice to have them anyway. Very random that this book was sitting there in the box. The only Bronze Age X-Men, X-Men number 133, this is the first solo Wolverine story. This is the first time I've owned this book, which is pretty cool. Batman number 666, The Mark of the Beast. I don't know the Iron Maiden song, but uh, who doesn't love 666? Anyway, this is a future story about Damien as Batman. And look at that. Hulk number one, the first appearance of the Red Hulk, General Thunderbolt. Ross, beautiful copy too. This is like the fourth copy I've gotten this year. Uh, maybe you saw it in the video. I might have spoiled the lead a little bit, but the biggest book that I found in here personally for me, maybe not monetarily because of the condition, but personally for me, it's another piece of the house that I'm building. And that house is the house of Todd. And that book is a G.I. Joe special number one. So a couple weeks ago, you saw a video of me at a flea market in California looking at buying this book in a 9.4 in a slab talking to my buddy and saying I don't really need it graded but I really want this book and why is this book so important Tom McFarlane drew two issues of G.I. Joe and one got published and then the other one never got published which is this issue the reason why is Larry Hama longtime G.I. Joe writer and partial G.I. Joe creator uh, of of this era you know he worked in the toys Larry Hama did not like finished pencils that McFarlane turned in he hated them he hated them so much, and because he had a lot of swing in Marvel, they shit can the uh, issue, and they never published it. I believe this comes out around the like the mid '90s, and GI Joe decides to publish this issue with an homage, clearly to Spider-Man number one. But I don't know if it was done as a fuck you to Todd. Oh, he left, but we can still, you know, we can still profit off his art anyway. This book is extremely hard to find because it was low print run. It was at a time that people weren't really buying G.I. Joe. There was just a whole bunch of G.I. Joe, a bunch of Image and Devil's Due Publishing. And I'm just like, ugh, this is crap. And then I just saw that. And I was like, oh my God, it's in there. Holy shit. With a press, it'll look beautiful. I don't think I'm going to get this slab because this is going in my Todd collection. And for those of you that don't know, I did a deep dive into Todd. But I my goal in collecting overall for my personal collection, is to get every piece of published Todd McFarlane art in a comic book or a magazine. And I wanted to do Marvel DC and everything else because that's a lot less. 
and then I wanted to dive into, you know, getting all the spawn and all the variant covers and all that stuff. This is a huge piece. This is probably the biggest book I don't have. And I got it for a dollar. Which goes to show you, as me and other Dave say, those books are out there. This was fantastic. At the time of filming this, I don't know if I'm going to see any more books or boxes from this woman. But it was a great opportunity. I had to jump on it. I'm just super thankful to the people that I meet and the conversations I have. And that's really all this boils down to is like your interpersonal relationships with people, even if you don't, you're just meeting for a first time. It, it really matters. And I'm thankful for everybody joining. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and watch till the end. West Coast Wednesday, every Wednesday night, 8 p.m. PST. Comic book claim sale and auction. And check out my links below. I love you all. Where's Ghost Avengers? I'm a guy, a comic guy. Check out this haul. Subscribe, like, follow. Peace! Peace. Peace. Wow, I am sweating. If there is a hell, I'll see you there.